Dear students, we have discussed many unit water testing procedures. Now let us see a critic of unit roots. What we consider here is the question why there are so many unit root tests. The answer depends on size of the test and power of the test. The answer depends on the size of the test and also the power of the test. Now size means level of significance. Size of the test means level of significance. That is level of significance is probability of committing committing type 1 error. Probability of committing type 1 error. Power of the test means as we have discussed in the last class probability of rejecting H0 rejecting H0 when H0 is false. Power, probability of rejecting H0 when H0 is false. That is power. And the power is calculated by calculated by subtracting the probability of type 2 error. Remember this probability of type 2 error is beta. So power is calculated by subtracting the probability of type 2 error from 1. So power is equal to 1 minus beta. 1 minus beta. That is probability of rejecting H0 when H0 is false. And accept H0 when H0 is false is beta. Power is probability of rejecting H0 when H0 is false. Now, the maximum power is 1. If that is when beta is equal to 0, that is if a probability of type 2 error is 0, that is probability of accepting a false hypothesis is 0, means you are rejecting a false hypothesis, power is equal to 1. And in most unit root tests, the H0 is the process is non stationary versus H1 the process is stationary as we have seen in the case of Dickey Fuller, Dickey Fuller GLS and PP test. Now let us see in detail the size. The size of the test is nothing but the probability of committing type 1 error. We denote it by the notation alpha. Now in the previous classes, we have shown that Dickey-Fuller test is available in three forms. Pure random walk, random walk with the drift, random walk with the drift and a deterministic test. Suppose that if the first model is the true model, you estimate the second model. That is, when the pure random work is true, you estimate 2. And if we say that the process is stationary at 5%, alpha is 5%, null hypothesis is rejected, you say that it is stationary. 
but this is not the true level of significance it is the nominal level of significance true level of significance will be much higher that means if you have competing models and if you experiment with the different models and arrive at a model after experimenting with the different models the true level of significance will be different from the nominal level of significance as pointed out by Lowell and discussed in the context of econometric methodology earlier. I think you still remember that. Now that is about the power. The second, oh sorry, that is about the size. About second is about the power of the test. Most of the Dickey Fuller type tests have less power. That is the tends to accept H0, that tends to accept H0 more frequently. Tends to accept H0 more frequently means they tends to accept a false H0 frequently. That is, that tends to accept the accept that the process is non-stationary more frequently. The reasons are one power depends on span of data span of data. If for n for a given n for a given n power is high if span is larger. That is what does that mean? It means that 30 observations in 30 years n, 100 observations in 100 days. Here the, in the second case time span is only 100 days. In the first case span is 30 years. So a model with 30 years has more power than one with 100 days, even though the sample size is large in the second case, but the span is low. So if you have a data with a low span, its power is low. That means you will accept H0 that it is non stationary, even though it is not. The second is if O is almost equal to 1, O is, uh, I mean, uh, phi 1 is almost equal to 1, almost equal to 1, versus phi, that is phi 1 is say 0.95, but not strictly equal to 1, we may declare the test not stationary, even though as we have discussed in the last class phi 1, 0.95 means the process is stationary. So you will accept H0 even though H0 is false. That means the power is low. And the third one is if you have more than one unit root, the test is Dickey Pandula test. And a fourth problem that we will discuss in the next class is if there are structural breaks, structural breaks, the conventional unit roots will not catch structural breaks. And as Tokan Watson discusses, non stationarity arises due to two reasons. One is stochastic trend. The conventional unit root test will capture this. A second reason for non-stationarity is, is structural break and conventional unit root testing procedures will not catch this issue. So, so many alternatives are suggested, many ad modifications were introduced by Perron, NG, Elliott, Rothenberg, Stoker, Fuller and so many others. And Madala and Kim suggested that 
the traditional dickey fuller augmented dickey fuller and pp test must be rejected in the context of due to low power its inability to detect structural breaks etc but still it is widely used now in the next class we will consider how to test for structural breaks in in all the testing procedures we have discussed we have considered only how to detect stochastic trend structural break has not been discussed that will be considered in the next classes so when discussing the question why there are so many unit roots it relates to size and power size because we experiment with the different models power is a problem with the, the unit to unit to root testing procedures we may accept h0 more readily that is we may accept a false hypothesis more readily that is the conventional unit to root test cannot distinguish between 1 and 0.95 even the one is non stationary 0.95 is stationary so it will accept if i1 is 0.95 when it is actually a stationary process so it has low power and uh, com compared to dickey fuller a test with more power is dickey fuller gls procedure suggested by stoker rothenberg and elliot anyway these are the conventional unit to root test procedures if you are doing your uh, empirical analysis using time series you consider all these tests experiment with all these tests to see whether there is considerable difference in the results between dickey fuller kpss pp dfgls then ng peron and so many other procedures are there 